Let's now welcome Professor Sir Shankar Bala Subramanian from University of Cambridge, winner of the 2022 Breakthrough Prize in Life Sciences, to tell us more about Cambridge DNA. Sunny, um, distinguished visitors, uh, it's a great honor to be here um, in Beijing and, and a great honor to be part of this uh, celebration of such a momentous discovery. I'm going to give you a, a Cambridge perspective um, on this discovery. Now first, for those of you who um, aren't aware, Cambridge uh, University was founded in 1209, so that's 814 years ago. And I'm actually going to start with a little bit of geography. This, this photograph I took a couple of weeks ago, um, this is a street called Free School Lane in Cambridge, which I'll say more about in a moment. Um, now, um, I'm actually going to start with chemistry. Chemistry was established in Cambridge in 1702 by um, a chemist called Vigani, who was originally from Verona. Now, he was a contemporary and close friend of, of Sir Isaac Newton. They were both a trinity. And at that time, up until that time, um, there was no formal chemistry. It was, it was more alchemy, um, which, which Newton and others were practicing. Uh, now, Vigani established a chemistry, which was actually just in front of this road to the right, there's a street called Pembroke Street. And uh, he established a chair, the 170 chair in chemistry. Now, many years later in the 1940s, that chair was held by a Nobel Prize winning chemist, um, Alexander Todd, Lord Todd. Now, Todd worked on the chemistry of nucleosides, nucleotides, and nucleic acids. In fact, he um, used synthesis and degradation and characterization. He was one of a number of chemists who established um, the chemistry of, of purines and pyrimidines that make up DNA. And in particular, he worked on the phosphate derivatives, the nucleotides, and helped solve the configuration of, of ribonucleosides that make up RNA. And he also established um, phosphorylation chemistry and the three prime phosphate, three prime, five prime phosphodiester coupling reaction. In fact, in 1955 was the first paper uh, that led towards chemical methods for the synthesis of DNA. Now, some of this work actually preceded um, the structural work, uh, which took place at the Cavendish laboratories, shown here. Now, the, the Cavendish laboratories were built in 1884. They were named after the then chancellor of the university, William Cavendish, the seventh Duke of Devonshire, who contributed towards the formation of this laboratory. And up until that time, physics had been largely a theoretical subject, and this was an experimental laboratory. So if you walk down this street, um, you will see here the first Cavendish professor was James Clark Maxwell, who, as many of you will know, established some important equations on electric fields and magnetism. Um, later, um, there was J.J. Thompson, um, who discovered the electron um, in this building. And then subsequent to that was Rutherford and then Sir Lawrence Bragg. He became Cavendish professor in 1938 and established X-ray crystallography in this building. And um, interest in structural biology was, was stimulated by the arrival of Bragg. And then Max Perutz, who, um, as many of you will know, was working on the structure of hemoglobin. John Kendrew joined him, who studied the structure of myoglobin. 
And in 1947, the MRC funded uh, a structural biology unit in the Cavendish. Now, in 1949, Crick was there, and he was initially working on protein uh, crystallography. And he was joined by Watson in 1951. And that is when they uh, made the contributions um, that we're here to celebrate. And, and this was really the basis for the discovery of the DNA double helix. Now, subsequent history, um, the MRC Structural Biology Unit um, evolved into what we now know as the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology. And Max Perutz was instrumental in founding this laboratory. And this is where um, Watson and Crick continued their work, Perutz, Kendrew, and others. There are many further discoveries. Brenner, Sidney Brenner, worked there with Crick, and, and their work led towards uh, a lot of the fundamental discovery work on messenger RNA. Now, staying with the theme of DNA, um, there is a session on sequencing later, but Fred Sanger was at the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, and um, he developed more than one approach for sequencing, um, but his approach using dideoxy terminator nucleotides in 1977 became the approach that was then widely adopted uh, to sequence genes, um, small genomes. And then eventually it was adapted um, by improvements in fluorescent technologies and Sanger's approach, in essence, was used in the Human Genome Project to sequence the first reference genome. Now, in fact, the UK part of the Human Genome Project also took place um, a few miles away from where this photograph was taken um, at the Wellcome Trust Sanger Institute, established in 1992. And this was led by, by John Sulston. Oh, interestingly, he, he did his PhD on the chemistry of nucleotides um, as part of the school that Lord Todd had established um, in Cambridge. And he then worked with Sidney Brenner at the MRC. So I'm just going to finish, really, by walking you a little bit further down this street, those of you who've seen the film or read the book, The Double Helix, will know that uh, there's an establishment near here where Crick and Watson announced that they had discovered the secret of life. So Cambridge has a lot of interesting places to, um, to have a beer and a conversation. And one of them is, so this is just further on from the Cavendish. If you walk to the end here, there is a street called Bennett Street. And if you take a left, you'll see on the wall this blue commemorative plaque. Um, in fact, uh, this was upgraded recently with a new one. And on here is inscribed, um, within these walls, Watson and Crick announce their discovery of the double helix. The, the more recent version acknowledges the contributions of, of Franklin, Wilkins, and others in providing the data. So if you turn left here, and I invite you to do this should you visit Cambridge, you'll see this board here, and if you turn right into this entrance, um, I invite you to go to the bar and have a drink of Cambridge DNA. Thank you.